Hi, and welcome back to chapel during this uh, Lenten season. We are uh, the fourth Sunday in Lent, the fourth week of Lent, and we are glad that you are with us today. And we are going to uh, begin with uh, singing Amazing Grace and praying the, the Lord's Prayer. We're going to pray the prayer first, and then we will sing Amazing Grace, and then we're going to sing some songs that help us uh, move through uh, this, this period of our Lenten journey. We'll have a brief introduction for that in just a moment. So let's start with the Lord's Prayer together today. We've had some technical difficulties with my computer, and so I need to just take a deep breath, and I think maybe it might be helpful to you too if we just pause and have a word of prayer. So let's bow and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing Amazing Grace together. That'll get us started good. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Let me uh, share with you uh, a reminder of our theme, and then we'll sing Amazing Grace again. So our theme during this Lenten season is Darkest Before the Dawn, and for this year, it seems so appropriate. We know it's all going to get better. It just has to. Within every moment of deep darkness lies the certainty that dawn is coming. Most people have felt at one time or another, as have many biblical figures, that everything seems hopeless. It has felt that way for us often, has it not? Oftentimes, these moments of utter darkness tend to take place right before a great healing or deliverance or miracle that changes everything for the better, maybe even the development of vaccines, and sometimes in ways that are unimaginable. In this season of Lent, many of us are experiencing some of these moments of darkness in all kinds of areas and in all kinds of ways. We invite you to join us on our Lenten journey as we travel together through the darkness to reach the dawn of hope and the glory of Easter Sunday. So let's sing Amazing Grace again. We'll sing that first verse, and then we'll sing when we've been there 10,000 years. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was during this Lenten journey, in addition to darkness uh, before the dawn, the, the hymn that we have sung every week has been nothing between because this season of Lent is a time of reflection and looking inside ourselves and uh, seeing what needs to be gotten out of the way in our relationship with God. And so this song sings about nothing between my soul and the Savior. Let's sing that together today. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen, nothing preventing the 
the least of his favor. Keep the way clear, there's Let nothing be between. And I think we've shared this scripture, but in Philippians, the apostle Paul wrote, all these things were my assets. Paul had just finished off a lot of things that he could brag about if he wanted to. You know, I'm a Jew of the Jews and that sort of thing. But I wrote them off as a loss for the sake of Christ. But even beyond that, I consider everything a loss in comparison with the superior value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have lost everything for him. But what I lost, I think of as sewer trash. The old um, translation of the King James, I think, said dung. Um, but this says, I think of it as sewer trash so that I might gain Christ and be found in him. So nothing between my soul and the Savior. Let's sing that again. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine, there's nothing between, nothing between my soul and my Savior, so that His blessed face may see, nothing preventing the least of His favor, keep the way clear, there's nothing between. How is it we can sing it every week and I can still mess up the words? But I can, can't I? You uh, can I see that too. every week, don't you? <laughs> uh, the next hymn today is I Come to the Garden Alone. One of the most popular hymns uh, of, of all times. Just a, a real favorite for many, many people. It was one of my, fav my mother's favorite hymns. And uh, very, very, very popular. Um, this hymn uh, had not appeared in the Methodist hymnal uh, in 1966, but it was included in 1989, and I thought that was very interesting. But this is what the person who wrote the words uh, had to say. His name was Austin Miles, and this is what he wrote about his writing this hymn. One day in March 1912, I drew my Bible toward me. It opened at my favorite chapter, John 20, verses 1 through 18, that meeting of Jesus and Mary Magdalene had lost none of its charm. As I read it that day, I seemed to be a part of the scene. I became a silent witness to that dramatic moment in Mary's life when she knelt before her Lord and cried, Rabboni. My hands were resting in the Bible when, while I stared at the light blue wall. I became, um, no, as the light faded, I seemed to be standing at the entrance of the garden, looking down a gently winding path shaded by olive branches. And then he goes on to describe the arrival of Mary and Peter and John as they gathered at the tomb following the appearance of Jesus, followed by the appearance of Jesus. And then he continues, I awakened in full light, gripping the Bible with muscles tense and nerves vibrating. Under the inspiration of the vision, I wrote as quickly as I could, as the words could be formed, the poem exactly as it has appeared. He noted that in his narrative that it seemed, he seemed to be a part of the scene. He felt as though he was walking with the risen Christ in the garden on that morning. And I have to say that Bill and I were talking about this hymn earlier, and all the years that I've sung this hymn, I never associated it with that. I just associated it with the garden, uh, you know, being in a garden with Jesus in, in prayer and, and really thought a little bit more about Gethsemane than I did. And I don't know why, because it talks about the morning and they were there in the evening, but I, I just had never thought about it um, in that way. And so um, we might sing it, you know, come closer to Easter maybe. But sure. anyway, let's sing that together. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God is closest, and He walks with me and He talks with me and He tells me. 
joy we share as we tarry there, and other as ever known. The other thing that I've always thought about with this hymn is Adam and Eve, uh, because the scripture says that the Lord God walked with them in the cool of the evening in the garden. And so I, I had thought of that as we had sung this hymn. So it's taken on some new meaning for me today as we have read about the writing of it and, and what Bill has shared. So let's uh, sing that first verse again. <clears throat> sing it, Laura, little Laura. I come to the garden alone Why the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear Falling on my ear The Son of God is disposes And He walks with me And He talks with me And He tells me I am His own And the joy we share As we tarry there None other next one is also about a garden of prayer, and it's the beautiful garden of prayer. We sang this a few weeks ago, and um, it's not one that I remember singing a lot when I was growing up, so I hope that you uh, remember singing this. It was written in 1920, so it's been around for a long time, but uh, it's just one that um, I had kind of picked up again because we hadn't sung it. Well, I know I hadn't sung it in the last 50 years, so if I sang it as a child, it's, you know, it's been a while. So, the beautiful garden of prayer, and it says, there's a garden where Jesus is waiting. And that, that's the line, I think, that speaks most powerfully to me, that Jesus is always waiting for us to come to join with him in prayer, to meet with him in prayer. So, let's think about that as we sing, the beautiful garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair. For it glows with the light of his presence. Tis the beautiful garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden. There my Savior awaits as he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. The last verse says there's a garden where Jesus is waiting and he bids you, he bids you to come meet him there just to bow and receive a new blessing in the beautiful garden of prayer. Let's sing that first verse again. <clears throat> There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair. For it goes with the light of his presence. Tis the beautiful garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden of prayer. There my Savior always, as he opens the gates, to the beautiful garden of prayer. Beautiful hymn. Our next hymn is Jesus Paid It All. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20 say, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. Something to think about for us, isn't it? How do we glorify God in our body? So this says, Jesus paid it all. And it begins, I can hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, and aren't we all child of weakness? Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. 
Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Let's sing that together. I can hear the Savior say, My strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. voice again today. It was really bad on Sunday, but it's getting bad again today. Uh, so it, the last line says, sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. The prophet Isaiah wrote, come now, let us argue it out. Or the old, the old translation, the King James says, let us reason together. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they shall be as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Let's sing that song again. I hear the Savior say, My strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me. that I, I did grow up singing a lot and haven't sung uh, probably since we married uh, because it's not in the Methodist anymore. And uh, I, I love this hymn and I think it's a very powerful hymn. It's called, it says, I gave my life for thee and I just lost the page. Yeah, I had a page that had notes on it about that. Well, I don't know what I've done with it then. You want you want. No, I have the words. I just had uh -huh. some I had some scripture to share about it and I see. I uh, hmm. Yes, here it is. Wow. I picked it up along with the other hymn, so I knew I had something. Um, and it's called I gave my life for thee and uh, here are the words. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed that thou mightst ransomed be and quickened from the dead. And now listen to this. I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? I gave, I gave my life for thee. What hast thou given for me? Those are powerful words, aren't they? Let's sing that and then I'll share some scripture with you. I gave my life for thee. My precious blood I shed. Chapter 15, verse 13, Jesus said, No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus laid down his life for us. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul wrote this, For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. So the words of this hymn are really powerful. I gave my life for thee. 
what hast thou given for me? That's a good question for us during Lent, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's a good question anytime, but it's a good question during Lent. Let's sing that one more time. I gave my life for thee, my precious blood I shed, and thou my ransom be, and quicken from the dead. I gave, I gave my life for thee, what hast thou been for me? a very powerful question Ooh, that just uh, really hits home oh I just wanted to say a word um, let's see and that thou mightst ransom be and quickened from the dead you know that word is in the um, in the Apostles Creed we say that he's coming to judge the quick and the dead and a lot of times we don't explain it yeah. that means the living yeah that you might be made alive from the dead and we talk about the quick oh i broke my fingernail down to the quick you know and so that's that part that's alive underneath that nail and so that's how I, when i first learned that what that word meant um I, that's what i thought of so he uh, he gave his life that we might be made alive from the dead so the next hymn is glory to his name or down at the cross depending on the hymnal that you look at it's listed both ways it says down at the cross where my savior died there where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Let's sing that and then I'll, I'll read a scripture for you. Down at the cross where my Savior died. There where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to Glory to his name, glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood of light, glory to his name. Bill asked me earlier, down at the cross, wonder why it's down at the cross, because it was on a hill, you know, and so we talked about, well, maybe it's because we fall on our knees at the cross. I don't know. I'm not sure why it says that. But Could be. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you wonder why someone wrote the words that they wrote. So, uh, But down at the cross, glory to his name. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 1, For in him, in Christ, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And that's what this is talking about. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. You know, we don't say that word as much anymore as people did, you know, years glory, ago. Yeah. yeah, people used to say, oh, glory, glory, you know, and things like that. And we don't hear that as much anymore. Let's sing it one more time. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood of life. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. This hymn speaks to us of um, Jesus' time in the garden and uh, the cross and really uh, all of the, um, what we would talk about is the agony of Christ beginning in the garden where the scripture says he sweat drops of blood, like uh, sweat like drops of blood fell to the ground. It's, it's lead me to Calvary, king of my life, I crown thee now, thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony. 
lest I forget thy love for me. Lead me to Calvary. Let's sing this hymn together. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn-crowned brow, lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget thy salvation, lest I forget thy agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. As we take this Lenten journey, we're on our way to Calvary, aren't we? Journeying to the cross. Let me read some verses to you from Mark's uh, Gospel, the 14th chapter, and Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. Wonder how far that is. I should have looked that up. He went about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. And this is Jesus' prayer. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up, got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come to the time of trial. That's a good question for us, isn't it? Sometimes don't you feel like we're kind of sleeping through part of our life? We're not paying attention. We're not listening well. And um, so we just need to pay attention more, don't we? And listen for that still small voice so let's sing again lead me to calvary king of my life i crown thee now thine shall the glory be lest i forget thy thorn crown brow lead me to calvary Lest I forget thy Gethsemane, lest I forget thine agony, lest I forget thy love for me, lead me to Calvary. We need to remember his agony, his suffering for us. In Hebrews chapter 12, uh, the writer said, Consider him, consider Jesus, who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. We need to remember that now because we're tired, aren't we? We have come through over a year of this pandemic and we are tired. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. Think about that. Interesting, isn't it? Um, did we sing that twice already? Yes. Okay, we did. I, I lose track, so I have to have Bill to keep me on track. So. All right. We come now to our last two hymns that we've been singing each week in Lent because they just remind us um, of our repentance and getting nothing between, and then this one, just as I am, without one plea, reminds us that we come as we are. We come as we are. We don't have to get our act together before we come and spend time with God in prayer. So let's sing, Just As I Am, without one plea. Just as I am.
Isaiah 55, 1 through 3, we've shared this each week, but I just, I want to remind us what it says. It says, come, all of you who thirst, come to the waters. And you that have no money, you that have nothing to bring, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money. We have nothing to bring. And he gives it to us without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Just as I am without one plea. The, the next verse, and I, I think we've sung this before. I think we sang it last week, in fact, because I think this one we remember. Just as I am in waiting not to cleanse my soul of one dark blot. To thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Let's sing that second verse together. Just as I am waiting not to cleanse my soul of one dark spot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God. getting the words mixed up on that one, didn't I? It just really did. Uh, but great, great words. And um, it's not just an invitation hymn at the end of the service. It's a reminder for us all the time. And our closing hymn, as it has been uh, all through Lent, is to remind us that even though we are in this soul-searching period and somewhat of a somber season, we do that in the great assurance, the confidence of God's amazing grace and that Jesus is a friend for sinners. And you know, he was always getting in trouble with the church people, the scribes and the Pharisees, because he hung out with the sinners and the tax collectors. And so let's sing this great hymn, Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, what a strength in weakness. Jesus, what a help in sorrow. That's one we really need to remember because some of us are still sorrowing over the dear ones that we have lost during this long year, this long sorrowful season. Jesus, what a guide and keeper. Great words, aren't they? Just a reminder that he is always more willing to receive us than we are to go back and confess and, and uh, be with him. So let's sing that one more time. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. before we uh, read and recite the Lord's Prayer that uh, we are uh, moving on through Lent. We have a couple more weeks of Lent. 
uh, on uh, as we enter this, the final week of Lent, we will be entering Holy Week, which begins on Palm Sunday and takes us through Good Friday. And we are going to have a service that actually does that in our scripture and our hymns. It will take us from Palm Sunday. So we'll start with singing Hosanna's, loud Hosanna's, and it will take us through the crucifixion. So I'm looking forward to sharing that service with you in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and then we will have a glorious Easter service. So we'll look forward to uh, sharing that service with you as well. Now let's share together in the 23rd Psalm. Will you join me as you read or recite with us the 23rd Psalm? The, the Lord, Lord is my shepherd, shepherd I shall not want. He maketh, he maketh me, me to lie down in green pastures. pastures. He, he leadeth me beside the still waters. waters. He, he restoreth my soul. soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Let's sing together. God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till, till we meet. God be with you.